Okay, all right, we got a game today um, called Written in the Sky. This is a little visual novel, a Yuri visual novel. Um, this does have 18 plus material, and I will be taking 18 plus uh, path, so there might be some edited stuff for those who are watching on uh, YouTube, but I do plan of posting up an unedited version somewhere else that will allow such content. And uh, I'll be posting it up on my blog to where you can watch that. Now, this is free to play. And it is available uncensored on Steam. So if you want to play it, you have any interest interest in playing it, and you want to see the the content that I might cut out, depending on what it is, actually is, um, you can just play the game. It's from my understanding, it's not that long. So we'll see if we can do this in one sitting. We might have to split it in two. We'll see. But uh, how about we get into this uh, this little story here? All right, let's start this up. All right, yes, we'll enable the 18 plus content. 10 minutes, just 10 min more minutes. I eyed the clock anxiously, awaiting the moment every student in the classroom yearned for. Just another 10 minutes and I'll be free of this prison. A handful of other students followed my example, watching every second tick by as we waited the end of another school day. Time seemed to slow down the closer we got. Our teacher's voice became more tired and drawn out, and every moment became agony until at last. Alright, class. That's it for today. Proving to be an, as unmotivated as the rest of us, our teacher concluded the lesson with time to spare. Early mark? Heck yeah! Please take down whatever notes you need for the... Azura, what are you doing? Before the teacher could finish speaking, I had stuffed my belongings into my school bag and jumped stuff for my seat. <laughs> so she's ready, like, I'm ready to get out the door. Oh, sorry. Goodbye, Sensei. What the hell? Are you, like, leaving early? Uh, that was rude of me. How could I leave the classroom without saying goodbye to our teacher? I don't think the, the class is even done yet! <laughs> Azura, that's not what I... Before Sensei could lecture me, I dashed out of the classroom with the, the kind of grace and elegance one would expect from an 18-year-old high school girl. Now, I will say, that's one thing I, I do find weird about this one, is she don't look no 18, but... That is what the story says, so that's what she is. She's 18. She must just be a midget. Really now, trying to chain me to that boring classroom, what kind of life is that? Life is for living. I'll study when I'm dead. It doesn't make much sense. How, how are you going to study when you're freaking dead? You're dead! I skipped the gleeful, gleefully down the hallway, ignoring Sensei's aggravated shouts and heading straight for the front entrance. As disheartening as it may sound, this is pretty much a normal day at school for me. Pay as little attention as possible, sneak out of class at every opportunity, then leave the second our teacher puts his chalk down. For someone serious about their studies, such as lifestyle, it would seem blasphemous. Conversely, anybody interested in club activities or spending time with their friends would consider it a waste. But not me. My only regret is that I can't leave class any sooner, or not attend them to begin with. She must not like school or something. Because the truth is, I can't stand this place. Yep, right there. She can't. Well, it's either this place she doesn't like the school in particular, or she doesn't like school at all. Ah. Uh. What a day. I was asleep in class more often than I was awake. I'm pretty sure I didn't learn a thing. Papa would be pissed if he knew. After returning home from school, I buried my head in my pillow immediately reflecting on my actions. Though I had no problem leaving class early or skipping class, my father was another matter altogether. I shuddered at the thought of what my father might do if the school rang him. Having an ace detective for a father isn't as much fun as everyone thinks. 
He has an innate ability to sense when I'm hiding something from him, and his interrogations are never by the book. I'm no expert in legal studies, but I'm pretty sure tickling me into submission is a violation of the Geneva Convention. <laughs> I think that's just a way of approaching, you know, your child. I mean, you can't, like, torture them. But tickling is not really torture. <laughs> Making you laugh a bunch. <laughs> Until you got tears coming down your eyes. As I sighed deeply over my own fate, I glanced around the room for some way to kill the time before my father returned. Why did you want to get out of school so early if you have nothing to do? Unfortunately, unlike most girls my age, I don't have any interest in fashion or TV dramas or boys or anything considered girly. Worse, as easily the life would be if I were a tomboy, I have no interest in sports or video games either. What the hell do you do in your free time? Read books? Did she mention anything about books? I don't think she mentioned anything about books. Maybe she likes to read. The only recreational activity I've ever indulged is, is the detective training my father has mandated since I was a little girl. So you like playing detective. Okay. Then I would assume you'd be out, about, out and about trying to figure things out or something. Really, Papa? This is all your fault. What kind of father teaches his only daughter about useless junk like that? If I did want to be a detective, he could have at least waited until I was out of diapers. <laughs> if only Mama was still here to keep him in line. My mother left us when I was still a toddler, shot by someone with a grudge against my father. Well, I guess that stuff does happen, you know. Your father probably got him thrown in jail or something, and apparently either got out or broke out and killed your... I guess killed your mom. He probably wasn't after your mom. Probably was after your dad and your mom got in the way. Either that or he was holding her hostage. Or something. Her parents, my grandparents, offered to take me in, but my father stubbornly refused. and insist insisted that he would take care of me. That's nice. I mean, you always hear about not that many fathers taking interest, but I think that is a totally a, a conversation that has nothing to do with video games. That is a societal conversation that would require a, a good a good argument with multiple people for different sides to to come up with a good conversation for such a thing. Because there's quite an in-depth reasoning behind all that shit, <laughs> that type of stuff. Unfortunately, his fatherly duty ended there. Are you saying he's busy all the time? Always occupied by work, he left me at home alone on a daily basis, leaving to me to more or less fend for myself. Well, that kind of sucks. I mean, taking you in and then... I guess he had the, just the, the desire to want to take care of you, but apparently he got indulged in his work. The only time we ever spent together was his mandatory detective training. Or when I got in trouble at school. Maybe that's why she skips out on school and everything. Maybe she secretly wants her father to get kind of mad. So it's like one of their few times they get in arguments, it seems like. I mean, as she says right here, got in trouble at school. So it's, it's kind of her way of getting attention. Needless to say, the latter became a habit. It's probably because you wanted attention. I mean, she's always, if he's always busy, and he, you don't seem to spend much time to him or talk to him, I guess, you know, even if it's trouble, you kind of want that, you know, attention. You you want him to care, and I guess, you know, kind of, in a way that is, you know, kind of care if he's kind of mad at you, I mean, he wants the best for you, and even though you're going out, <laughs> it's your few times you get to interact with him. It's not that I have a problem with learning. If the subject is interesting, then I'm happy to pay full attention. But every day it's just the same boring, useless junk. Well, they do teach you a lot of useless junk in high school. Well, school in general. I mean, there's plenty of stuff you learn that's useful, and there's some interesting stuff. But there's a lot of stuff that doesn't prepare you for shit that they teach you. It doesn't prepare you for anything. 
Really? The way things are going, I'd be better off. I shook my head as negative thoughts began to cloud my mind. Living set such an event, uneventful life, I often found myself thinking of things I shouldn't. I contemplated leaving home, quitting school, or just doing something terrible so Papa would have no choice but to watch over me. Right there, see, right there. Papa would have no choice but to watch over him. <laughs> she definitely wants, you know, Papa's attention. Even though I knew such thoughts were bad, with a life as meaningless as mine, I had no reason not to think that way. After all, what is the point in living a life without meaning? <sighs> An early mark from school? How do I use it? I really need some excitement in my life. I'm assuming that excitement is going to be coming. As darkness began to fall over the city, a solitary figure stalked the night. I walked up and down the street, looking for an artifact long forgotten. A valuable artifact of enormous value, exceeded only by its power. But no matter how long they searched, the artifact eluded them. Tss, not here either. I know it's around here somewhere. Many years have been spent tracking the valuable item down, but only now was the search reaching its conclusion. After so many hunters reached their dismise, demise seeking the relic, only its true owner, the one person unable to use it, had proved capable. I wonder what this relic is. After so many years of searching, crying that nobody would beat me to it, I shall once again take possession of that which is rightfully mine. Tonight, I shall take to the stars once more. Oh. I wonder who this mysterious girl was that we see. Another day dearly passed me by. I found myself pacing around the house, waiting for my father's imminent return. I wasn't in a hurry to see him. In fact, if possible, I hoped to spend the night without facing his incessant questioning. Okay, I mean, you kind of gave off the vibe that you kind of wanted his attention, but you kind of don't, too? I don't know. But a part of me craved that interaction. Yeah, right there. She, part of her kind of craved it. I thought there was something about her that kind of wanted that attention, that interaction, and everything with her, her father. Any face time with my father might offer. I knew I'd have to face the music sooner or later. Jeez. I've been through this countless times. But facing Papa still makes me nervous. I guess there's a reason he's so good at his job. Playing nice cop won't always cut it. As I mold those carefree thoughts, I could hear the sound of a key unlocking the front door. Oh, it must be Papa. Welcome back, Papa! Faced with my enthusiastic greeting, my father only stared at me silently. He placed his coat and suitcase on the kitchen table, loosened his tie, and allowed I to wear a sigh. Hard day at work? When is it not? My father turned to face me. His voice sounded relaxed, but knowing my father, it was merely the calm before the storm. Of course, it would be easier if I didn't keep fielding phone calls from your school. I wonder why that's in. I, that seems like it's italic for some reason. It like went from full to italic. Honestly, you snuck out of class again. What have I told you about disrespecting your teachers, huh? In a split second, he jumped from relaxed tone to interrogator mode. Hey, it's not like that. Aw, she kinda has a little cute face there. Oh, I like that face, it's kinda cute. Oh, then what is it like? Class was already over. The bell just about to ring. Yeah. <laughs> You darted out of class before it did. Yeah? Well, you can just go to your room and think about what you've done. Papa? Now! Without putting up a fight, 
headed straight to my room and slumped down on my bed. I had no desire to further enrage my father, and I knew that the longer we spoke, the more information he would extract from me. So, my sentence was to be a night cooped up in my room, then I considered it a light punishment. Not that it really matters. I already ate dinner before Papa came home, and I have nothing interesting to do anyway. Whether I'm in my bedroom, the living room, or the kitchen, it doesn't change the fact that I'm bored out of my mind. You really should find a hobby. Mine is playing video games and all that other shit like that. The only upside is being sent to my room is know how to sneak out. <laughs> Is that what you do at night? You sneak out? Having escaped from my room, I quickly left earshot of my house. I headed down the street, going to the opposite direction of my school, and aimlessly strode through the night. Whew, much better. I hate being cooped up in the house almost as much as I hate being stuck in school. It's different if I have something to pass the time, like a good book to read, or a new crime documentary to watch. But the other 99% of the time, sleep is the only thing I look forward to. While silently complaining to myself, I lost track of how far and for how long I had been walking. Across countless roads, all unfamiliar to me, I wound up in a part of town I have never visited before. Oh no. This can't be happening. I got lost in my thoughts and forgot to watch where I was going. Worse, I didn't bring my mobile phone. So I can't call Papa for help. Uh oh. Actually, that part might be for the best. Yeah, she pro he'd probably be yelling at you. If I rang Papa now, I'd not only be scolded for leaving class early, but also for sneaking out of the house. And, worst of all, we're getting lost. Shit, man, if you were my daughter, I'd be worried as hell if you were out in the middle of the night and you snuck out and I didn't know about it and you, were lo you got lost. I'd be worried that some bad guy would try to do things to you. Because, according to Papa, a good detective is always mindful of their surroundings. So getting lost is... That's it. The training my father put me through bubbled to the surface. I combed through my short-term memory, mapping out a path back to home. I worked backwards, through every intersection, every park, every vacant lot along the way. I never thought that extensive regimen my father put me through would ever come in handy. I thought it was all just useless information, completely bare bereft of any practical application. But how? In my hour of need, I wish I paid more attention. I tried my best to recall the path I took, but as I was deep in thought at the time, I hadn't paid attention to this in the slightest. This is bad. I'm just getting myself more and more lost. I've probably crossed over into another city by now. If I don't find a payphone or someone to ask for directions, then, just as I began to feel desperate, a shadowy figure emerged before me. Ooh, it's the mystery woman, who's has a weird outfit, kind of scantily clad in a way. I mean, she's showing off her belly button. I couldn't see their face. Due to the darkness, how far away they were, but nonetheless, I had found someone. Finally. I'm saved. Hey! I kind of like her without her glasses. I think she looks cuter without them. As soon as I called out, the shadowy figure ran in the opposite direction. Oh no, you don't. <laughs> You're gonna run after them. Maybe they don't want to talk to you. I chased after the mysterious person, paying no heed to the circumstances surrounding us. Even if I seemed dangerous, shouting out to a complete stranger in the middle of the night, I truly needed their help. 
I don't care if they think I'm a rapist or an axe murderer or whatever. Are you a rapist? You look like a small, a small girl. I wouldn't be afraid. <laughs> well, that afraid. I don't know about um, an axe murderer or something, but a rapist? I wouldn't think that. <laughs> I'll be like, oh, it's just a small person. The sun will start to come up soon. I need to find my way home ASAP. When chasing after the figure didn't work, I decided to take a more stealthy approach. Using my father's detective training once again, I stalked my Vic. <laughs> Are you going to say victim? <laughs> er, I stalked my target, keeping my distance and waiting in the shadows. That's what you were going to say. Yes, you were. And truly enough, after not catching a glimpse of me for a while, the figure let their guard down. Phew. That was close. My target breathed a sigh of relief, but moments later, they appeared to be overcome by wonder. Wait a second. This is... They moved towards the platform in the middle of the warehouse we had wandered into. Though conspicuously and obviously suspicious, the platform had a certain allure. It was holding a sacred treasure. Don't tell me the treasure she's been looking for that she was talking about earlier, or the whole little thing. It is. I finally found it. I need to call HQ immediately. Without wasting a moment, the figure ran outside, either excited or desperate after their interesting find. Now this, this is quite the bind. I know I should chase after them. I should find my way home before father realizes I'm missing, but... Despite knowing better, I walk straight up to the platform. Sitting on the platform was a box. A small, square, black box with strange characters all over it. Whoa. What language is this? It looks like something out of a sci-fi movie. I picked up the box in one hand, then opened it with the other. And inside I found... A ring? A ring. Inside was a ring, engraved with characters similar to those on the box itself. A gold ring, big enough to fit on the finger of a full-grown man, yet slim and smooth enough that a woman might wear it. Huh. It's kind of a letdown. What were you expecting? The ring is obviously too big for me. And even if it wasn't, I'm not really into jewelry. And again, it would be a waste not to try it on. Oh no, her, what's going to happen? Her, her curiosity and she's going to put it on and something's going to happen, I bet. Despite the obvious difference in size between my finger and the ring, I slipped it onto my left ring finger. He, Azura-chan, gets to be a bride after all. I wonder if Papa will buy me a wedding present. As those carefree thoughts floating through my mind, I remembered something important. Uh-oh. Papa. <laughs> I completely forgot about finding my way back home. Finally setting my priorities straight, I began to pull the ring off my finger. As much fun as this has been, I really need to get home already. However, as soon as I touched the ring with my other hand... Oh no, oh no. What the hell? Ugh. What the heck? The mysterious lady. Uh oh, she must have heard the, the sound. This is bad. This is really, really bad. I only wanted to try the ring on, but now, now I'm a thief. I looked down at my ring finger, and a glowing ring adoring it. Oh no, it's glowing? And how is it that the ring now fits me perfectly? I don't remember having such chubby fingers. Well, this doesn't seem like no ordinary ring, girl. What I'm assuming is, it's like some magic ring or something. You put it on, and 
now it has shrunk, you know, and now it's like part of your finger, I wouldn't be surprised that you can't get it off. That light too. Why did the ring flash like that? Maybe that was part of the whole, you know, shrinking process, you know. Kind of became part of you. Uh-oh. Now you've been branded. Um, I'm so confused. Despite my complicated feelings and muddling thoughts, I kept running. This has to be a dream. Nothing this bizarre, this bizarre could happen in real life. When I wake up tomorrow morning, everything will be back to normal. Left alone in a warehouse devoid of human life, a single being strolled through the darkness. Tracing their fingers along a box wrapped in alien writings. Oh, alien writings, oh my. Okay, so that seems like this this word alien here that we've been put in. Um, I'll say that this, uh, this box and this ring is not of uh, earthly origin. They breathe this sigh of both relief and frustration. <sighs> to think that a human would lay their hands on the ring before I did, and a young girl at that. I was so close, and yet... The being suddenly clenched their fists and smashed the alien box to pieces. All of that time and effort, all of those lives lost. Just to find this ring? Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> People died to find this ring? It must be one important ring. I can't afford to let that ring fall into the wrong hands now. That human girl refuses to hand over the ring. Then... I will have to take care of her personally. Oh my. Who is this chick? After a long night patrolling the city, and an even longer morning trying to find my way back home, I finally took refuge in the warmth of my own bed. I slipped off my shoes, removed my glasses, let my hair down, and finally... It's morning? Not oh, the alarm went off! <laughs> Probably didn't get much sleep. You've got to be kidding me. Granted a reprieve from the m monotony of my usual daily life. I dragged my heels even more than usual as I walked to school. This guardly is by no means a feeling I rarely exhibit. In fact, not a day goes by where I don't feel that way while walking to school. But on this morning, the source of my dismay was another but normal. A weird ring on my finger which randomly starts glowing. My father getting angry at me for leaving class early. A night with zero sleep, after wandering around town all night, and to top it off, I have this strange feeling that I'm being watched. Oh, it's the one chick. He seems to be stalking you. I look down at the ring on my finger, curious to see if the pattern thus far held true. Surely enough, as I had done all morning, every time I felt like I was being watched, the ring started to glow. Oh my, I wonder what kind of connection that means. Is it like a warning device? Like, someone is, uh, you know, watching you, they have evil intentions or something, it's like warning you? Uh, funny out that I have fat fingers was one thing, but this random glowing could be really problematic. I know. <laughs> Uh, I don't think the fat fingers thing. I really think that it kind of shrunk. I don't think it, like, she has fat fingers. It probably shrank. But the glowing thing, yeah, that will be kind of hard to explain to someone. Like, why is that ring on your finger glowing? You kind of have to come up with an excuse, like, uh, it's, uh, it has a battery in it, and it just glows. <laughs> Something a little better than that, though, of course. Sensei is definitely going to notice. And worse, it's on my ring finger. If he calls Papa, then are you not allowed to have jewelry at your school or something? I'm, I'm assuming it's probably some sort of dress code, no, no jewelry or something. Despite my melancholy, I quickly turned around as I felt the odd sensation once more. This is getting really weird. Is sleep deprivation causing my mind to play tricks on me? I didn't want to consider it, but maybe I should skip class and take a nap. 
Papa won't like it. Assuming he finds out. But I'll only get in more trouble if I fall asleep in class. Besides... This level of paranoia can't be healthy. As Azura completed the final leg of her morning journey, her stalker emerged from the shadows. <sighs> so close. And yet, I still can't get my hands on it. I wonder when we'll finally figure out who this mysterious woman is. But we'll have plenty of opportunities from here on out. But you kind of know what your target is and who has your target, so... And you, you seem to have found her. And you've been stalking her, so... I wonder what's gonna happen. Once a human girl goes to this that child containment center... Is this woman not human? Her? I mean, she's calling her a human girl. And child containment center, they call school. She won't be able to escape. And once I get my hands on that ring... This universe will never be the same again. Oh my. What, what, what is this ring that we have? Is it like some sort of ring of power? From like Lord of the Rings or something? After wandering around the school a while, I eventually locate an empty classroom. That's a pretty empty classroom, alright. Look like it has chalkboards. Damn. <laughs> I haven't seen chalkboards in a long time. When I was in high school, pretty much everything became uh, whiteboards. It appeared, it appeared to be a classroom reserved for club activities of some sort, or perhaps some simply due for cleaning, as the desks had been all been removed. Whatever the case, I would soon put the empty space to good use. Am I going to go sleep there or something? Skip class and sleep? Hmm, no, this is more like it. Resting on the floor, lapping up the sun rays. Kind of feel like a cat. Well, cats do lazily lay around. <laughs> From a bride to a cat. A bride wearing a cat ears instead of a wedding veil. Drinking milk instead of champagne. I think the key, uh, uh, I'm, I'm picturing a bride, you know, a, a girl in a, br a bride's outfit wearing cat ears. <laughs> hey, that'd be an interesting wedding. Cat girl. <laughs> I don't know about the drinking milk thing. It sounds much better to me. Oh. Yes. Meow. I do. Meow. Playing cat now, are you? Now take me back home. Meow. I need to cough up a furball. Now that's not romantic. <laughs> Once I actually heard myself say that out loud, aloud, a furious blush came over my face. Uh, that was definitely the sleep deprivation talking. Without further delay. Bright red from ear to ear, I removed my glasses and put my head on the ground. So you fell asleep? Oh, 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 looks like you slept all day. As I lay in the warm sun, not at all deterred by the hard surface beneath me, I slept both long and well. My fatigue from last night vanished without a trace, replaced by the energy and enthusiasm I so desperately needed. Ugh. Man, I needed that. Nothing like a good night's rest. Can't care. Or a good day's rest, in this case. Aren't you gonna be, like, up all night now? <laughs> you kind of, like, slept all day now. I should do this more often. I'll skip class and sleep in the empty classroom. Filled with such carefree thoughts, I slowly adjusted to the light surrounding me. But no sooner had I done so, that reality hit me. Oh no, how long was I asleep? It's already starting to get dark outside, unless I slept the whole day away. This is bad. I can't believe it's already dark outside. Just how late is it? Um, not a clock in the classroom or something? 
Oh, oh, we get to see her not all like shadowy figured. Oh, it's not that late. It just looks that way because my spaceship is blocking out most of the sun's ray. Oh, oh my. So she is like an alien lady. Hello, alien lady. Ah, uh, I see. That explains it. Ah ha 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 ha. Your spaceship? What the heck are you talking about? I'm talking about my spaceship. That's what you humans call them, right? I'm not getting the terminology wrong. Ah, uh, no, I suppose you. Wait a second. I put on my glasses, which I had taken off before sleeping, and looked at the person in front of me, with far more clarity. This woman, she seems familiar. Um, have we met before? You don't look like a student, and I don't think I've ever s had you as a teacher. Um, if, if that was, was a teacher, would be like, why are you dressed like that? Would be the other question. <laughs> it's like, I don't think you should be dressed like that at school. The stranger looked at me skeptically, as though doubting my inability to remember her. Earthling, we met only last night. Is the memory of a human girl truly so awful? I had heard that the fish of gold would forget every few seconds, but I believe primates to enjoy a more fruit, fruit, fruitious memory capacity. The fish of gold. She must be talking about goldfish. <laughs> the fish of gold. If I had been misinformed, then I must correct my records post-haste. Um... Huh? What the heck is this woman talking about? Did she escape from a mental asylum, thinking she was still in high school? Anyway, forget about that. I'm here to make you an offer. An offer? I'm a crazy person. I don't think so, <laughs> but if I reject her outright, she might get violent, so I can at least play along. That's right, Earthling. The... <laughs> it looks like it's supposed to be alien writing. It's very important to me, and I must have it back at any cost. Unfortunately, you seem to have already... with it, so I've been put in a difficult situation. Well, you seem to be speaking another language there. The... The what? Oh, I'm sorry. My human ease is perfect. Isn't perfect yet. Ha ha ha. Human ease? <laughs> oh, well, we have multiple languages here on Earth. Human ease doesn't make any sense. Human ease? I suppose a rough translation of the artifact around your finger would be the Ring of Binding. Now that you're already bonded with it, my role here has become rather complicated. Even after the woman in front of me finished explaining, I still didn't understand. Sorry, but I don't get it. Ring of Binding? It's bonded with me? What does that mean? And who the heck calls this language Human ease. Just who are you exactly? That's what I was thinking. Human ease? Oh. Now that you mention it, it seems I forgot to introduce myself. Oh, we get to learn her, le her name. My name is Sienna. And I am the Queen of Mars. She's a Martian! Uh, apparently in this world, in this story... There are Martians. And they're not little green men or anything. <laughs> they're actually okay. Unless that's not her real form. The Queen of Mars? Yes. Have you heard of me? I don't think she's heard of you. <laughs> I doubt she even knows that anything lives on Mars. No, 
I wouldn't say that. I mean, I'm familiar with Mars, but... You are? You, a mere Earthling, are aware of the situation on Mars? I truly misjudged you. It seems you are more capable than I thought. You pesky foreigner? Pesky foreigner? Hey! hey what did you call me? A pesky foreigner. That is the term for someone of a different birth planet, correct? Hmm. <laughs> well, no. Uh, extraterrestrial? I think that's what we would call someone from another planet. That is what Earthlings have been calling me ever since I arrived here. I am assuming that this is taking place in Japan and what they're calling her is Gaijin. I'm no longer sure if this woman is crazy or just stupid. A anyway, enough of that. What were you saying about an offer? Oh. That's right. How forgetful of me. The reason I came to you this day was to ask for your finger. Y you want my finger? <laughs> Look at her face! <laughs> it's like, what the hell? You want my finger? You're not gonna cut my finger off, are you? Precisely. Uh, uh, wait! Where are you going? Oh, what's this? Oh, did I accidentally press a button? Oh yeah, I must have accidentally pressed something. Whoops! I wonder what the hell I pressed. <laughs> I must have clicked on something. I must not have noticed where my mouse was. Anywhere but here! She's pro you probably scared her away by saying you want her finger. <sighs> Drain the entire way home. I arrived in record time. Despite leaving later than usual, I ran quickly, taking every shortcut I knew, and intermittently checked behind me for my insane pursuer. <laughs> I mean, she has that spaceship. She. I wouldn't be surprised if she beat you. I knew no good would come from this stupid ring. Why did I have to try on that crazy lady's jewelry? I don't even like that stuff. I tried to calm down as I entered my house. Despite the insanity awaiting me when I woke up, I still felt fairly refreshed after sleeping for so long, so it wasn't difficult to restore my mood. What about the crazy lady? She's gone now, and I'm sure the police will capture her sooner or later. Have you told the police? <laughs> that some crazy lady is chasing you? Besides, at this point in time, I have better things to worry about. I peered into the living room, and immediately sent my sights on my father. A bit rare for him to return home before me. It did happen from time to time. He's just standing there, and not moving an inch. He must be waiting for me. I sighed heavily, already disheartened by the conversation with no doubt awaited me. Oh well, let's get this over with. Good morning! Good afternoon, Papa! Morning! <laughs> Boy, you sure got home early today. Oh. Did you get off early today because you've been working so, working so hard lately? Or maybe you just couldn't wait to see your darling daughter, hmm? Uh-oh. He's really mad. He hasn't said anything. Uh-oh. When my father tru father's truly furious, he doesn't yell or scream. <laughs> what happens? What happens? He becomes dead quiet and wanders around like a ghost, ready to snap at any minute. Oh no! Well, I guess I'll start get started on dinner then. I started to walk towards the kitchen, desperate to escape my father's fury. Ah, uh, don't bother with my portion. I already ate. Uh-oh, it's Sienna. I, I knew she would be there. Ah, that's okay. Just dinner for two then. Oh, Sura. <laughs> no problem at... 
Uh! Emerging from behind my father was Sienna. The crazy lady I had tried so hard to escape from. Uh! Whoops, I keep pressing shit. I, I gotta watch where my... I just gotta stop moving my mouse everywhere. I, I gotta stop clicking on moving that mouse everywhere. Emerging from my father was Sienna, the crazy lady I just tried... Why did I just go backwards for her? Uh, how did you... When did you... Hmm... I'm sorry. I don't understand what you're saying. Is that an... Idiot? I took a deep breath and tried again. How did you get home here before me? And why are you here? Oh, I see. You're wondering how I arrived before you, even though you left first. I'm sorry to say this, but your ethical ability is no match for my... The alien stuff again. Er, my transporter, if you will. It converts most forms of matter into light, then... So sh you, sh you teleported here. Forget about that. Why are you here? Oh, yes. Your second question. My apologies. I didn't mean to alarm you, but... As you suddenly ran away during our earlier conversation, I thought it might be more convenient for you if we continued talking here. I stared at Sienna blankly, unable to see any hint of malice or deceit. If she knows both where I live and what school I attend, then escaping from Sienna by normal means may be impossible. But if I had the help of an ace detective on my side... I turned to m face my father. He was still unmoving. As I walked in front of him, however, I noticed that something was amiss. Gasp, gasp, gasp! <laughs> oh my, what the hell? He's gasping? My father continued to open his mouth widely, breathe in deeply, then close his mouth and exhale through his nose. What the hell? <laughs> That's what I'm imagining. What the hell's going on? His eyes remained wide open, unblinking, as, lo as though he was shocked by something directly in front of him. <laughs> I'm just imagining what his her father would look like right now. It, it just this, this funny looking face, not blinking or anything. Whoa, eyes all wide open, looking straight, not moving, mouth going, breathing out of the nose. <laughs> um, what's wrong? Oh, right. The birth giver's counterpart responsible for your creation. Do not worry. I will return him to normal once we are finished here. R return him to normal? What have you done to my father? Do not fret, child. He is unharmed. I simply swamped his con consciousness with that of official gold. <laughs> official gold. So... His consciousness is swapped with a goldfish. Oh my. I can only imagine what he's thinking right now as a goldfish. He must be like, going crazy. <laughs> like, what the hell? What the hell? I'm in water. Ah! I look toward the fish tank in our living room. You swapped his brain with the brain of a goldfish? Uh, swapping their brains? No, no, don't be silly. I simply swatch, swap their consciousness with that of the fish. Is there a difference? Well, I guess there is. You see, he didn't take the brain. He still has his brain in there. It's the conscious size of him. I guess, you know, it's a temporary thing, I guess. You know, his thoughts and everything, his brain activity. Hmm. I guess it can't be 100%. Maybe it's more complicated than that. Well, I guess, you know, just his conscious side, you know, is in the brain, is in the head of the fish, and the fish is in his type of thing. Of course there is. All I've done is temporarily move your father's thoughts into the brain of the goldfish, and vice versa. Oh, yeah, that's, that's what I was trying to get to. Thoughts. <laughs> this way, we can talk freely, and your father will forget everything he hears. Oh, yes, I, I remember. The fish... She was talking about the fish doesn't remember things very long. But 
That's... that's so... That's amazing! Well, shit, man. Unexpected. Apparently she's, uh... I mean, her life has been pretty boring now. Well, usually. Maybe this is some excitement coming here. Haha, <laughs> you flatter me, Earthling. But our technology is no more advanced than yours. I don't know if we'll ever m manage to transfer entire living creatures into waves capable of being replicated. Tina looked toward the television as she spoke. Is that what she's talking about? Uh, even I'm confused on what she's trying to talk about. I mean, she just, they just said the television, so you like, she thinks the stuff on the television is real? Like, the picture's real or something? She thinks that the people she sees on TV are moving around as formless signals. Mm, she must not understand. They must not have television. Her technology may be amazing, but this woman is clueless about Earth. Anyway, about your finger? Uh-oh. I thought that if I couldn't run away, I could at least rely on my father to protect me. But in my, his current state, Papa's just... Gasp, gasp, gasp. <laughs> there has to be some way out of this. Maybe she doesn't want my finger after all. Maybe Sienna got the word wrong. I have to make sure. Um, Miss Sienna? Just call me Sienna. Okay then, Sienna. Why do you want my finger exactly? What possible use could you have with a human finger? Um, that's a silly question. You humans came up with a ritual requiring the finger after all. Like hell we did! <laughs> I don't care what barbaric civilizations this woman has visited before around here. We don't chop off fingers. <laughs> Am I mistaken? For humans, the bonding ritual requires a ring, a finger, and two humanoid entities, correct? So, the protocol is to ask for the other's entity's finger, yes? Oh, she, she talking about marriage? The human bonding ritual? Wait a minute, she couldn't mean... Are you talking about marriage? Yes! That is it. Alien language. Or as Earth is called, marriage. Ah, ha ha ha. So, that's it. Phew. I was really worried there for a minute. I thought Sienna wanted to cut off my finger. Like, in some bizarre cult ritual. But she really wanted to ask for my hand, not my finger. Ah, ha ha ha. <laughs> Damn. She thinks in her head in between these things and and it just doesn't come to her right away. You, 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 you want to bury me? Yes. Marriage. We must become one. Oh. Uh, this must be where all the eerie stuff comes in. Ye alien, human, girl. Eerie marriage? What the hell is this going? But why? Why would you want to marry me? We've only just met. Isn't this too sudden? Besides, we're of two different species. Why would you suddenly propose to me? Hmm, I proposed? You are mistaken, Earthling. You are the one who proposed to me. Okay. I... I did? No. I think I would remember doing that. What are you saying? The proof of your proposal is right there. Santa pointed the ring on my finger. That ring rightfully belongs to the King of Mars. So she is the male? <laughs> As the ruling queen, the one who wears that ring is destined to become my husband. Okay. <laughs> so... She is going to be the man, it seems like. You put on that ring, and it bonded itself to you. That is proof that you are fit to be my other. While your ring is... Your your ring picks, uh... Picks odd, 
Apparently, I don't know if your ring knows that, that she's a female as well. <laughs> her other? The ruling queen and her husband, the king? Wait a minute. How could we even get married? I'm a girl. I can't possibly become a king. That's what I'm thinking. Now, now. Although the closest translation I could think of for is king, my person needn't be male, or even Martian for that matter. Okay. So, the translation she could think of as king, so it it doesn't really mean king. So maybe other ruler, second half of a ruler, ruling body or something. Or something of that nature. I don't know what else to think of it. So apparently it doesn't need to be male or a Martian. Okay, then I guess the ring isn't as weird as I was thinking. The ring has chosen you, and that's what matters. Unbelievable. A grown woman is proposing to me, because a ring told her to. <laughs> What's more, she doesn't seem to care that we're both girls. No, wait. That isn't the problem here. There's no way I could go along with something this ridiculous. Two days ago, we'd never even met. Now she wants me to be the king of Mars. But, but, what about air and food? Even if I went with you, I wouldn't survive a day on Mars, would I? Don't underestimate yourself. The king of Mars, as chosen by the ring, is far more capable than you think. I wonder if the ring has, like, given her something. Like some sort of abilities. As one wearing the ring, such trifling matters won't affect you in the least. I put on a ring and just like that, I'm already the king of Mars. This is too much. Are you really that opposed to marrying me? Well, I think your concept of marriage and hers is totally different. You don't even know each other. Usually you build up a relationship, and I don't even know if she likes girls. So, a marriage might be a to this whole entire marriage thing, what you have translated it into. Totally might be two separate meanings, I mean. I can't think of another word to, to, to call it. <laughs> I can't force you to bond against your will. Uh, no, no, it's not that. It's just... Why do you even want to bond with me? Can't you just forget about all this? I wish it were that simple. Okay. Oh, ooh, what's this? Is that your spaceship? Many Earth centuries ago, we Martians were at war with the... Mercurians. Resi Residents of Mercury. Oh. Apparently, this universe, this 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 reality, has other planets which which are inhabited by alien beings. Okay, so there are Mercurians and Martians. We fought for countless years, decimating all visible life on both our of our planets and forcing one another into our spaceships. But as the war dragged on, both sides harbored an increasing desire for peace, despite to return to and rebuild our once beautiful planets. It was then that we reached a truce, a ceasefire agreement, bound by a sacred ritual. The kind of Mercury married... The kind of Mercury married the Queen of Mars. Oh, is that supposed to be King of Mercury? And the two were bonded, bonded together by a peace, powerful relic. A ring forged from rare materials and imbued with untold power. For many years, neither race bore any ill will towards the other. The original reason for the war was long forgotten, and we all lived in peace together. It was a wonderful, decadent period of time, one we all wished would last forever. But even then, there remained some who craved war. A few militants reared their heads now and then, seeking to disrupt the peace we had all worked so hard to attain. And one day, following the assassination of the kind of Key Mercury, they succeeded. 
Is that really supposed to say kind of Mercury? I mean, it's misspelled again. It's, maybe it is supposed to say kind of Mercury. Maybe the kind. Is there another meaning to kind that I don't know of? Because it, to me, it makes no sense. But maybe there's another meaning to kind. Or maybe, as I was thinking, that D is not supposed to be there and it's supposed to be a G. It's supposed to be a king. They stole his ring and launched it into the cosmos, desperate to prevent another bonding from ever occurring. I think it's supposed to be king. For some reason. First, as per their plan, mistrust over the assassination broke out, and our races faced off against one another once more. Oh no, they were at war again. So, you see, that is why I need that ring. If I do not bond with the wearer of that ring, it's only a matter of time before our planets become barren wastelands once more. Okay. I listened closely to Sienna's stories, absorbing as much information as I could retain. I found it hard to believe that the ring on my finger, so ordinarily in appearance, size, and weight, could be so important. Even so, as Sienna finished talking, one question bothered me more than any other. But why me? The ritual was just a gesture, right? Isn't the important part that the one you marry is from Mercury? No, that is incorrect. I apologize for using misleading terminology, but marriage is the closest thing you humans have to our potting ritual. Hmm. It must be. I mean, she could probably, you know, explain it all what the meaning behind it is. She's trying to use just a word to try to explain it, but apparently the word is not really... It doesn't seem like it fits that well. I mean, it, there's similarities, but the meaning behind it, amongst many other things, don't seem to fit. I mean, it doesn't need to be another Martian. It doesn't even have to be that. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what it means, but it's a bonding ritual. You see, unlike marriage, causes both parties to undergo a change. Oh, what kind of change is this? Two entities form an unbreakable bond, which once binds their very lives together, such that the death of one would mean the death of the other. Oh my. That's, uh... You kill one, you kill both type of thing. In return for the life bond, one party increases their strength proportionally to the binding relic. If I, the Queen, were to retain the power of this ring, I could unite Mars and Mercury forever. Forevermore. Sienna spoke of enough power to rule two planets, but even then, she didn't appear to be happy in the slightest. The happy, naive, forceful woman I had met only yesterday was gone, and replaced by a reluctant ruler. Poor Sienna. I never would have imagined she had it so rough, tough. Either she gets married to whoever the ring chooses for her, or her home planet descends into war. If I were in her shoes, I don't know what to do. I do. So, it doesn't matter if your partner isn't from Mercury. Not at all. As the offspring of the late Queen and King, I am half Martian and half Mercurian. My very existence is enough to unite both planets. So, you're special, so... If you didn't exist, and you were just a Martian or a Mercurian, it might be a little bit different than the situation. But because you're an offspring that's half Martian, half Mercurian, you have this ability. As I need, all I need now is power. The power of the ring. This ring, the ring I sh Selfishly, unknowingly bound to my own body. If it weren't for my curiosity, Sienna wouldn't have nothing to worry about. She'd have the ring, free to choose her own path, and I'd be none the wiser. But now... I understand that this is a big decision. It is not an act to be taken lightly. Nonetheless, I must ask that you expedite your decision. I'll give you one Earth Day to consider my proposal. Oh my.
The day after Sienna left me with her proposal, my life con continued in a relative normal fashion. I think it's supposed to say my life. Seems to be some uh, misspellings in here. A few. Well, and they're not really misspellings of words. It's, I think, well, I guess you, they are misspellings. They're, it's, it's, the letter's wrong, but it's a real word. I mean, it's, it's not like the word is misspelled and it is not a word. It's the wrong word has been made. <laughs> I said goodbye to my father, who was still trapped inside of our pet goldfish. Ate breakfast, cleaned my alien wedding ring, and headed to school. You cleaned your alien wedding ring. Just a normal morning without any talk of aliens or interplanetary wars or ceremonies of any kind. Even so, after such an abnormal day, there was no way I could go about my day in peace. Every waking moment I wondered about what hap had happened and the choice Sienna left me. I stayed up most of the night thinking about it, but this really isn't a decision I should be rushing. Getting married is a huge deal, especially since I'd be marrying into royalty. I had my own servants. I'd rolled over a planet. Nothing else? It certainly wouldn't be boring. Well, that's what you think. You don't know what... She, you know, she, she kind of just wants to use you for power, it seems. I mean, for all we know, she could just throw you in a dungeon. It doesn't seem bad, but... Who knows? You never know. I could experience an entirely new way of life. Not to mention all of the cool alien technology. Yeah, this might be something to... Excite your life. You seem pretty bored at life. And yet, so do I really have the guts? I only just met Sienna. I couldn't do something as impulsive as marry her, could I? This whole situation is utterly absurd. How can I even consider going through with it? You know, if an alien came down, alien humanoid that looked like basically a human, maybe some slight differences. Let's just say that she had like pointy ears like a Vulcan or an elf or something. I mean, they still look pretty much human. And was beautiful. I might take up her, her if she offered me, you know, something. Like to, to go up and into space and travel the planets with her. And rule over something. You know what? That's like a one in a once in a lifetime thing. Depending on my situation on Earth at that time... I'm just, I just might be willing to take that. I mean, she, well, she's still young, but she, she doesn't have much going on in her life. Why not? I mean, you don't have anything at the moment in your life. And this is like a once in a lifetime thing. And then Benjamin Franklin said, Hey, Azura, you listening to me? exciting and no life on earth could hope to compare to it but what would I be getting myself into yeah that is the big question what would you be getting into that's the mystery but sometimes you got to take that step into that to that whole entire mystery that, that mystery I need more time more information the way things are I can't Azura Ugh, what's happening I knew it. You fell asleep in class again. I, I didn't fall asleep. I just... No more excuses. Go to the vice principal's office right now. Uh, not again. I knew I shouldn't have bothered coming to school today. Oh man, she's getting in trouble again. With another boring day coming to an end, I quickly made my way home. Despite being in school for the day, I spent most of my time outside of class being reprimanded for my behavior. As a result, the day passed even more slowly than usual, giving me ample time to think about Sienna's proposal. Sienna, are you here? I shouted into my silent home as I entered the living room. However, I could see neither hide nor hair of Sienna. My father, who was laying on the floor, <laughs> floundering like a fish out of water. <laughs> oh, that that just, I'm just picturing it. This is funny as hell. It was the only person I could see. And, he, and she just leaves it, her father there. I wonder how long he's been flopping around there. 
Sienna? I entered my bedroom, softly calling out as I entered. Ah, you've returned. How was the learning prison? Have you fulfilled your sentence for today? I mean, this isn't her bedroom. Is this getting to the Ichi part? I considered correcting Sienna, but the more I thought about it, the more I realized there was nothing to correct. I guess so, though I spent very little time actually attending class. I was mostly trapped in detention. Ah, I see. So that is what it means to have a detention. A person from the learning prism called, asking for your father and informed me that you had a detention. I asked her to elaborate, but she just told me about you, not about this concept of captivity within captivity. Once again, I couldn't fault Sienna's summation. It's, it's not like I was trying to get in trouble. I was just deep in thought. You mean to say it's my fault that you were punished? Uh, no, no, that's not what I'm saying. I don't blame you for that. But you're right. That is what I was thinking about. I see. Been after thinking it over all day. Oh, whoops. I, I always do that. <laughs> At least once. I always... My, butt, my finger's on the button too early. A single day was not enough to reach a decision on something as ir irreversible and life-changing as marrying the queen of another planet. Nonetheless, as my deadline approached, I knew what I wanted to do. Sienna, I... I want to... Whoa, she can actually say it? You want to blah blah blah... You? <laughs> Oh, maybe it's the ring. Maybe the ring taught her the, the, the language. So she can speak it, you know, Martian or whatever the hell it is. What? What are you saying? Where'd you learn to speak like that? Huh? Did I say it wrong? I, I mean, that certainly is a stage of... But still, to jump straight to that? Oh, shit. It must be something else. Oh, shit. <laughs> I think you said the wrong thing. Um, did I say something wrong? I was trying to use the word you used yourself, but I must have said it incorrectly. What I'm trying to say is, Sienna, will you marry me? Uh, you mean it? You'll marry me after all? That's right. Oh. They're going to get all lovey-dovey. Sienna, even if we barely know each other, the truth is, my life has been more interesting these past few days than it has been for the rest of my life. If a life with you is even half as enjoyable, then I want to spend the rest of my life with you. You, you really mean it? You're not just saying this out of pity. Or a sense of duty as the ring bearer, are you? No way. I wouldn't sign my life away over something as silly as that. Sienna, if you'll have me, then I... I want to be your king. Sienna can just stare into my eyes with a look of pure joy on her face. Tears formed in the corners of her eyes, though never streaming down her cheeks. Is she, like, gonna kiss her or something? What the hell's gonna happen here? Building up to something, it seems like. Aw, oh, jeez. If Sienna starts crying, then I won't be able to hold back either. Driven both by curiosity and the desire to keep Sienna from crying, I moved on to the next step. You're gonna kiss her, aren't you? So, um, Sienna? What do we do now? How do we perform that ritual thing you were talking about? Hehe, <laughs> what are you talking about, dear? You already said it yourself. We, in other words, we consummate our marriage. 
Oh my. <laughs> Consummate? I don't get it. Well then, let me show you. Oh. <laughs> you know what, guys? We're going to end it right here. And because I think I know what might be coming up. We'll just end it here. I want to thank you guys for watching. This will make it easier for me to edit this. <laughs> so you can watch whatever piece that might be happening. You know what? Yeah, that's what we're going to do. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, if YouTube was a little more open to this type of stuff, I would just go through and do it. But, you know, YouTube's not that way. You can blame YouTube. Oh, but yeah. Uh, I want to thank you guys for watching this. <laughs> um, if in the next video, the next part, if it's short or long, we'll see. I will mention whether uh, I put, you know, how much content and a link to the blog, of course, um, where you might be able to see the other video, the other section of where that material might be. But yes, we're going to end it here. We're going to leave you on a high note here so that you don't know what the hell's going to happen. <laughs> so feel free to leave a comment. If you if you like the video, leave a thumbs up or a thumbs down. If you, well, if you like the comment, you like it, you leave a thumbs up, of course. If you don't, leave a thumbs down. Um, if you want to see other videos and be up to date, feel free to subscribe. And uh, as I will have a descript in the description box, I will have a link to my other channel as well as a link to my blog. And I'll also have a link to if there's any, I'll make a little notice in there if there's any, uh, the next part, if there's a little part missing from the, whatever might be the next video. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching, and you all have a great day.